in a few minutes. But right now, let's get into the lesson. So, the topic today is, in recent years, many small local shops have closed because customers travel to large shopping centers or malls to do their shopping. Is this a positive or negative development? So the first thing that I've got to say is that you always have to put your answer to the question in the introduction paragraph. Here the question is, is this a positive or negative development? It's asking you for your opinion. You must give your opinion. This is your thesis statement. If you don't put your thesis statement in the introduction paragraph, you are left with a band four for your task response score. The purpose of an essay is to develop and defend your thesis or your topic or your idea, your point of writing the essay. If you don't put your point in the introduction, then the meaning of everything else in the essay is not clear. It's like having a body with no head on the body. You always have to put your opinion in the introduction paragraph. Now, I know people always say, oh, but Chris, on the internet I see these four different types of essays, the opinion essay and the discussion essay and the whatever the other two kinds of essays are, and these things tell me not to put my opinion in the introduction paragraph. My answer to this is, have you taken the IELTS test over and over again and you keep on scoring band 6 or band 6.5? This is the reason why. People who have great English but keep on scoring 6 or 6.5 in their writing, this happens because they're following bad advice on the internet. If you got band 8 in speaking or band 7 in speaking and you're stuck at 6 for writing, it's because you get task response score four, because you didn't put your opinion in the introduction paragraph. You get cohesion and coherence score five, also because you didn't put your opinion or your thesis statement in the introduction paragraph. And then you can get band eight for lexical resource. And you can get band eight for grammar. And so what's the average? 6.5. And it doesn't matter if you get nines here, you're still getting the same score here. And this is why, this is one of the several reasons why people get stuck at band 6 or 6.5. It's got nothing to do with your English. It's got everything to do with bad advice on the internet. And then you take the test again and again and again and continue to follow that same bad advice and so you continue to get the same bad score. It's got nothing to do with you personally. Your English is excellent. Your study skills are great. It's about the advice that you follow. And if you know Einstein, you know who Einstein is? Einstein's favorite famous quote about insanity, about craziness, Insanity means doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the results to be different. And so, if you've been getting 6 and 6.5 over and over again, this lesson is exactly what you need. Mm, great, thank you for posting the question, Fatten. All right, and so with this, we're going to begin. Now, the question asks us first, is it a positive or negative that um, super malls or large shopping centers open? So, could I ask a, a question, please? Please, go ahead. Uh, could I fairly agree with the topic? In other words, could I say that it, is, it has, a, or it is a double-edged sword and it has positive and negative impact? This is in fact what I'm going to suggest to you. I always recommend that you talk about or that you somewhat agree with the issue or you recognize the positives and the negatives. The idiom for this in English is sitting on the fence. 
I sit on the fence. I don't put my foot down on this side. I don't put my foot down on this side. Now I can agree and disagree with both sides and I can have a more complex argument and it helps boost my TR score. <clears throat> if you're wondering what I'm talking about with TR and CC and LR and GRA, I'm talking about the IELTS band descriptors. You can find them at www.ielts.org or if you simply go on Google and do a search for IELTS writing band descriptors, IELTS speaking band descriptors PDF, you'll find a copy that you can download. But this is what the examiner uses to score your writing and your speaking. The, the examiner's copy is more specific than this, but it's the same. And so you should use this as your guide. This tells you what the meaning of band six is, what the meaning of band seven, band eight, band nine are. And so if you want to, to see what it is that you're actually doing, this is what you use. Also, this is how you tell if a teacher knows what they're talking about. If the teacher is not referencing these and they're just throwing out numbers to you, what are they basing these numbers on? How do they know what the meaning is? The meaning comes from these IELTS band descriptors. <clears throat> so let's get into this question. The question asks us, is it a positive or a negative thing for supermarkets? And so we need to talk about both sides of the issue. Always need to talk about both sides of the issue. It doesn't matter what the question is, you find a way to make two, part, two sides of the coin and you discuss both of them. Another reason why people only get band six in task response is because they only talk about one side of the issue. I know in that little JPEG on the internet, it, it says for some of these question types that you only need to talk about one side of the issue. Again, if you've taken the test over and over and you've written only one side of the issue and you continue to get six, this is another reason why. Because you haven't developed the argument completely. Band eight on the IELTS band descriptor says you have a fully developed answer and your points are fully extended. If you only talk about one side of the issue, you've only written half an essay. So you only get half a score and that's your band six. And so always both sides of the issue. When we develop these, we always start with the body paragraphs first. You don't start with planning your introduction first and then go into the body. You start with your body paragraphs first, and when you're finished, then you develop your introduction and conclusion paragraphs. Many people, they start out and say this is a positive, and then they do their body paragraphs, but somewhere in the middle, they change their mind, and they don't realize that they change their mind. Now the introduction says I agree, but the conclusion says I disagree. Now you're left with a band five for your task response again because your meaning isn't the same from the beginning to the end. This is why you develop your introduction paragraph last. And so first we're going to talk about body paragraph one. And body paragraph one is going to be the advantages. So here, my topic sentence. I need a better pen. My topic sentence. Advantages of malls. And now, again, here's another reason why people get only band six for task response. They only put one main idea. I have main idea one, and it's going to be one advantage of malls is convenience. And now I need detail. And the details are get every. <laughs> Okay, 
So again, if you want to talk, unmute your microphone, say what you want to say, and then mute it again. First, main idea one, the first reason why malls are a good thing is convenience. Um, what I mean to say is that you can get everything in one place. A nice idiom is one stop, oops, that's not a T, shopping. It's one stop shopping. And now I have, I need to give my example. So for example, here, again, in the questions for all task two questions at the bottom, give reasons for your answer and include relevant examples from your own knowledge and experience. It asks you to tell stories from your own life. It asks you to do this. If you don't do it, you're going to not be able to rise up through the bands. And so my example is from my real life. I'm going to say the mall near my house. So, so, uh, so Chris, I can include the, the idioms? I, I, I can include idioms? Yes, of course you can. Okay, this is the first time I hear it. I know. <laughs> It's not the first time I've heard what you've said. Everybody says this. Again, bad advice on the internet. What you need to do is make sure you use the right le layer, sorry, not layer, level of idiom. You don't want to use informal idioms and slang words in your task two essay. But something like one-stop shopping, or it's a one-stop shop, this is idiomatic language, it is very nice to use in your writing. It's mark, it helps your vocabulary score go above band seven. So here is my point. Malls are convenient. The details, you can get everything you need in one place. For example, the mall near my house, I buy everything I need there every week. Mr. Chris? Yes. Um. Sandbox advised us not to use the personal pronouns. I know. Uh, but in this case, you told us to use I am the mall. So what to do? What to do is stop listening. Use personal pronouns or not? I'm confused now. Yeah, I'll unconfuse you. Stop listening to everyone else. What? <laughs> stop listening to bad advice. Use personal pronouns. Okay. Right here. See, again. Use relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So, so in, in this case only, I should use the personal pronouns or uh, it can uh, be happen in, on, uh, in, in many tasks? All the time, every in time. This case only? Every time. Every time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank Use you. Personal so. pronouns. Mm -hmm. Personal experience. Yes. Um, Mr. Chess, if he didn't ask you for, rev for relevant examples, if you just ask about the uh, positives and negatives. If it asks about the positives and negatives, you still have to support the positives and negatives. The, the whole secret to getting this task response score is that you make a point. Then you describe the point. Then you prove the point or give examples. And it's at this level where you introduce your own real life experience here. And this, so this is where I use I. So the first point that I'm going to make is that giant shopping malls are very convenient. Malls have everything that you need. They have vegetable stores, clothing stores, shoe stores, entertainment. And for example, the mall that's near my house, West Edmonton Mall, is the biggest mall in Canada. And people, including my family, go there shopping and for entertainment nearly every day. Like in the wintertime, when it's freezing cold and dark outside in Edmonton, 
my wife and I often take our kids to the mall where there's lots of interesting things to do time outside. Point, describe it, and then prove it. We're going to mute microphones again. Sorry, I just muted microphones. If you want to say something, you're going to have to unmute yourself and talk again. Hi, sir. This is Narayan here. Hi. Uh, just one question here. Go ahead. Uh, whenever we are, just one question. Sure. Uh, whenever, uh, as you said, we have to give examples, make point, then prove the point. So for uh, to do all of these things, we should have some ideas uh, on a variety of topic. Okay. Right. And uh, to develop the idea, we should uh, read from variety of different context, uh, a variety of uh, uh, different fields. We should have knowledge. So to do that, can you suggest some books or something like I'm already reading newspapers, but can you suggest uh, something by, by which I, I will uh, improve my thoughts, my ideas? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Again, this is something I hear a lot. Forget about reading things to improve your writing. All of these questions are based on your own real life experience. Everybody has a shopping mall near them unless you live in a refugee camp or in some place that is even farmers, at least in Canada. Farmers go into the city and they go to malls. Everybody knows what a mall is. Everybody can talk about a mall. IELTS is designed for everybody to be able to answer the questions. It's not a knowledge test. The only knowledge you need is real life experience. The same as the speaking test. And especially for the general test, reading, writing, speaking, listening, the topics are all about everyday life. It's about getting things done reading menus at a restaurant, reading the bus schedule, newspaper articles and magazine articles. This is what IELTS is about. It's about can you function in real life in English. You don't need special knowledge and vocabulary too. You don't need special vocabulary. We'll get into that in a minute, but it's one of my Pet peeves, to give you another idiom, pet peeves is something that always bothers you, is people memorizing vocabulary that they will never ever use in their life. It's just a giant waste of your time. But we'll get into that later after we've done our plan. So here's my first point with the point, the description, and the example. If I want band six or band, if I want band seven, I need point number two. Main idea two is going to be price. And the details are um, massive stores. Oh, that's a terrible team. Massive stores uh, buy things for cheap. Buy things and sell things cheaply. And now I'm going to give the example. Um, the shoe shop in my city that I used to go to sold shoes for $50. But the market or the mall sells the shoes for $30. So I, the next point that I want to make about why malls are good is they're cheaper in price. As you know, when stores buy in large volumes, they get a discount and so they are able to sell things cheaply. For example, the local shoe shop in my town where I used to buy my shoes sold shoes for $50. Now that there is Walmart in my city, 
they sell the same shoes for $30. There's my point. And so here's body paragraph one. I've got my topic sentence. Main idea, detail, example number one. Main idea, detail, example number two. This will get me a band seven for this paragraph for my task response score. Now I move on to body paragraph two. Disadvantages. And the first one about disadvantages is that large shopping centers um, are bad for downtown. And my description or my details when shopping centers, oops, when shopping centers open in the suburbs, um, businesses downtown close. And my example is my own hometown. In my own hometown on Main Street, there used to be shoe shops and clothes shops and sports shops and bookstores and restaurants and everything else, music stores. But when the big mall opened in the suburbs, everybody went there and the businesses downtown all closed because people didn't go anymore and now the center of the town is a ghost town and they have problems with development and crime. So I can say my hometown Main Street is a, and now I use my idiomatic language again, it's a ghost town. Ghost town means people don't go there anymore. And then I'm going to go on to point number two. Again, I follow this pattern, the same here. And my second point about why shopping malls are disadvantageous is quality decreases. And I'll say local shops um, produce locally, produce high quality. Mr. Chris, please. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought that I would answer the question by only answering it's positive because one reason, two reason, not um, not explaining the two sides of the question. This is uh, advantage and not advantages. I thought that I only will agree with it's positive because blah, 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 blah. Not uh, only. Yeah, and you'll end up with a maximum score of band six for your task response score because you only talked about half of the issue. What you need to do. But he, but he didn't tell me, discuss both views. He didn't tell me. It says, is it advantageous or disadvantageous? And so what you have to do for a proper essay is you have to develop side one and side two, and then you make a judgment and you talk about why you think these reasons are more important than those reasons. Every essay that you do, you always have to find two sides of the coin. You explain both sides of the coin and then you use those points to justify your own opinion. This is how you get band seven, eight, nine in your essay. What we're doing here, this is with two main ideas. This will get you band seven, band eight. If you want a band nine, you add a main idea three and talk about that one too but always talk about both sides of the issue, please. And then you use those points to form your own opinion. 
I agree with this, I disagree with this, because in my own real life, what, 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 what? I agree with this, or I disagree with this, because in my own experience, I see that this is true, or I see that this is not true. But you can't justify your opinion if you don't create the situation to talk about it first. I know that okay, thank on the internet, in those four, that little JPEG that says the four types of essays, it tells you to explain one side, only one side. But again, this is a reason why people take the exam over and over and get the same score. Because they're doing so in agree and disagree, I should also mention both views in agree and disagree also. Yes, you have to develop okay. both sides of the issue and then you judge which one is better or which one is worse. That's the way you get a complete. Okay. Here in the IELTS band descriptors, band eight, band nine says fully developed and fully extended. Fully developed means you talked about both sides of the issue and then you judged it and gave your own reasons why you think that one is better than the other. Fully extended means you follow this pattern. You make a point, you describe the point, and you prove the point with examples. When you do those two things, now you rise above band seven into band eight. Okay, Mr. Peter, Hello, thank you so much. Yep. Voila, go ahead. There is, yes, just there is one question. If I give some disadvantage point and some advantages point, for sure I'll be agree with all of them. For sure, I didn't give, there is some disadvantage as uh, there is uh, blah, 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 and after that, but I not agree with this. For sure, I'll be agree with it. And so that That's meaning I'll be agree for all points. So then your, your decision is that there are some good things and some bad things. That's the way this essay is going to end up. I'm going to sit on the fence here. I'm going to say, I think there are good things and bad things about both sides. Mm. Do you agree or disagree doesn't necessarily mean you need to choose one. It means you need to explain both sides and come to a conclusion based on the evidence that you've developed. And so I'm going to say in my third paragraph, my opinion paragraph, I'm going to agree with both of these and I'm going to agree with both of these too. You're absolutely right. And then yes. my thesis is going to say when it comes to malls, there are both good things and bad things. And so I don't totally agree or totally disagree with either side. Yes, I got it. So local shop. Have yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, can uh, I talk in one paragraph, for example, uh, the advantage of a super mole uh, and advantage of a small mole and the disadvantage of a super mole and the disadvantage of a small mole in the same paragraph? Yeah, if we, for example, we can talk about if we change the topic from advantages of malls and we change it to convenience and then we can talk about convenience related to malls, convenience related to small shops and then we can talk about another paragraph about price and we can talk about advantages in price for malls and then for a main idea too for shops and the price. Yes you can but you change you switch the main ideas for the topic and you switch the topic into the main ideas. Yeah, on, in the same paragraph, can I talk a two side, a, about two side? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Some questions um, that way that you just said, they are easier to do in the way that you're thinking of now. But again, you do the organization exactly the same. You always make at least two points and you make sure that you have the point, the details, and the example. If you do it this way, it doesn't matter really what you say in the text 
as long as you structure it logically. That's what you're getting your score for. There's no right or wrong answers. There's just logical and complete development of the essay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I need to add my example here next. And so... Mr. Is... Good Mr. Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you very much for the lesson first. Uh, I would like to inquire about, well, one main idea that, you know, that has been in my mind for a long time. Uh, some of the teachers, they claim that uh, you can have a body pedigraph for the advantages and one for the disadvantages. And you can also have a third pedigraph that will be for your opinion. Do you recommend this kind of uh, way of writing? That's thank you. exactly what I'm going to do right now. After I add my real life example to this one, then I'm going to go over here and develop my opinion paragraph. <clears throat> so we're five minutes away from that, less even. So quality decreases with supermarkets or with shopping. And so I'm going to talk about quality and I'll say my shoes. Shoes from the shoe shop. They lasted four years. Shoes from Walmart last four months. And so there's my real life example. I used to buy shoes downtown at the local shoe shop, which was passed down from father to son, father to son, father to son for generations. And the shoes lasted forever. They were high quality. They took pride in their work. However, now that they've closed and I must buy my shoes at Walmart, their shoes are mass produced in a factory in China and they only last for four months at a time. And so there's my um, evidence. Remember point, description, proof. Point, description, proof. And now I'm ready for my opinion paragraph. My opinion is that I don't, what's the question exactly? We should make sure that we answer it properly. Is it a positive or negative development? Malls are a mixed bag. Here's another idiom for you. Malls are a mixed bag. Mr. Chris, he didn't ask us to write uh, our opinion. We should write it in every uh, test, in every question. Um, do you agree or disagree? This is your opinion. Okay. There are only two types of essays. One that yes. includes your opinion, one that doesn't include your opinion. If it doesn't include your opinion, you stop here after two body paragraphs. If it asks you what's your opinion, if it asks you if you agree or disagree, or how much you disagree or agree, or what's the other ways that it asks you. There's four or five different ways that it asks you for your opinion, but it's all but he, opinion. This type uh, wants uh, us to uh, write our opinion in this task? Yes. He didn't then mention your opinion. He only told us, is this positive or negative? Positive or negative is also your opinion. Thank you for okay. bringing that point up. That was the one I was trying to remember. Positive or negative, do you agree or disagree? How much do you agree or disagree? Do the benefits outweigh the drawbacks? Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? All of these ask the same thing. They are all okay. asking for your opinion. All of them okay. the same question, just with different grammar. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, iPhone, can you say that again? Mr. Chris, again, please. 
I'd ask, I'd like to ask about if I have a fair opinion, every cloud has a silver lining. If it is has thoughts, positive and negative, what should I say? Sorry, repeat that, please. Please repeat it. I didn't hear you clearly. Can you ask your question again about silver linings? Mr. Kirsch, I am, I am asking about if I have a fair opinion. It is having the same positives and negatives. It's every cloud has a silver lining. Everything has its own double-sided. So how can I say that? You just did. You say, it's my opinion that, like everything else in the world, this is not black or white. It's my opinion that the good comes with the bad, that though things are bad, good comes of it. Every cloud, every cloud has a silver lining is not quite the same thing though. That would be that, that it seems bad, but you can find some good. And so maybe you could say, I mostly think it's bad, but there is a silver lining. Think of a cloud. A cloud is big like this. The lining is something that's very small on the inside. And so if every cloud has a silver lining, it's meaning that most of it is not very good, but there is a little bit of good in it. The lining, like in a jacket in the wintertime, in the summertime you wear a thin jacket that has only one layer. In the wintertime you wear a jacket that has a lining to make it thicker, so it helps to protect it. So, but lining is not a big thing. Hi, Chris Narayan here. Hello. Uh, Chris, uh, your session is really very wonderful and I'm learning a lot of things. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, just one question. Uh, like you are uh, giving very easy tips uh, for uh, conquering this asset uh, task. So ca can you give some list of uh, ideas? Uh, is there available on your website or something? The ideas which we can use for uh, our essay completion, giving our opinion. Mm. Idioms. Um, we're going to discuss idioms after this. Right now, we're still developing the task response. And then after we've got it, the outline on the board, I'm going to talk about cohesion and coherence, vocabulary, which is idioms are a part of, and grammar. And so okay. hang in there. Stay with us. Sure. We'll get to it. So here's my opinion. Malls are a bit mixed bag. That is... I don't fully agree or disagree that they are all good or all bad. No. Hey, uh, hello, Chris. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, okay, hello. I'm from Pakistan, and uh, your lecture is very good, and thank you for that. And my question is that uh, can we uh, give some, uh, make some bullet points before uh, organizing our essay or before writing to the, the paragraphs uh, one by one? You should. Absolutely, you should. Step one is not to start writing immediately in sentences. Yes, exactly. The writing process, just like when you're at university. Step one is to make the plan. Step two is to write the paragraphs. And that's what we're doing here. This is what you should do during your uh, time in the writing test. It All right, okay. Only take out of, you've got 40 minutes on the test. Yes. It takes yes. 10 minutes to do the writing and it should okay. take 25 minutes to do the planning. Because once right. you've got a perfect plan, then it's easy to write things. But if you start yes. writing things from the beginning, then you're going to have logic problems because you write before you think instead of thinking before you write. 
and then it gets into trouble and you have to go back in your essay, the, clear, the clarity of the essay and your argument starts to go down. And so, great question. Always do okay. your planning first, and when your plan is perfect, then start writing things. We'll thank you, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll see how this develops further after I'm done getting this opinion paragraph on the board. So, main idea one I'm going to talk about the advantages. And I'm going to say I agree that malls are good. And my detail is going to be about convenience and price. And I'm going to say for my example that I shop at the local mall once per week. And spend $400 before I shopped three times per week and spent $500. So here I've looked at both of these points here and I've agreed with them. And I've given a real life experience to justify my answer. And so I've now dealt with the body paragraph number one. Now I'm going to go on main idea two. And I'm going to deal with the disadvantages. I'm going to say I also agree. And so I've got it's bad for downtown and a decrease in quality. And I'm going to say my hometown is the main street is empty. after Walmart. And the things I buy are not as good as they were. And I can talk about my favorite, my favorite clothing store. Which closed as a Walmart. Hey Chris, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, 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 so basically, I've, I've got to, in, to include two main ideas per paragraph. Is this right? Yes, that's right. For any type of question, yeah? Mm -hmm. Two ideas for, for any paragraph for, for any type, yeah? Okay, so should, uh, should I worry that much about uh, the structures of, of the sentences? Like, should I incl include complex uh, uh, structures for for, for, for each paragraph? Yes, you should, and that's what we're going to get into now. Okay. For now, my task response and half of my cohesion and coherence score is complete. I've got a fully developed answer, and they're fully extended, and my essay structure and paragraph structure is complete, except I haven't written my introduction and complete. Are you Chris? Uh Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, Chris Nida here. I have a question. Sure. Uh, like uh, you have discussed advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. My question is, uh, if uh, 
I have more points or I am in favor of advantages. So I have to write more about advantages and less about disadvantages or I have to write equal, equally in both the paragraphs. You have to always write equally in both paragraphs and then you give your reasons why you think one side is more important or better or worse than the other side. Always you have both sides so then you can make a clear judgment. Uh, uh, so, so Chris, I'm I'm sorry for for asking the same question, but 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 many people uh, have posted on the Facebook that uh, they have scored they have scored eight and nine with just one idea in 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 one paragraph. Well, so, I find that hard to believe. Um, as I said before, I used to be an IELTS examiner for writing, and having one idea per paragraph is too simple. If you look at the band descriptors, the band descriptors for band six says addresses all parts of the task, but some are more developed than others. Or it has presents a relative, a relevant position, although the conclusions are unclear. That's not really, oh, right presents main ideas, but they may be inadequately, inadequately developed. Think about mathematics, if you know math. To prove a straight line, one point doesn't prove a line. Even two points does not prove a line. If you want to prove a line is true, you need three points. And this is if you want a band nine essay, you would better put a main idea three on each one of these. Logic is mathematical. You've only got 300 words. This is another thing. 250 words is not the ideal word count. 250 words is the minimum word count that you can use if you hope to get a proper essay structure. You should expect to write at least 300 words if you want to ban seven. 300 words, not 250 words. You can't do it. Even me, to write an essay. I've been doing this for 16 years, and I was an IELTS examiner before. I can't write a band eight essay in only 250 words. There's just not enough ideas in it to be able to complete the task properly. <clears throat> so, where are we? We've got our three body paragraphs developed. And so now we're on to our cohesion and coherence. And so we're talking about now joining our ideas together. And so topic sentence, every topic sentence, as you know, needs to start first, second, finally, or first, second, third, first, second, finally. This is the low form. What you'd better do if you want a higher score is to a nice complex sentence. The first thing that will be discussed in this essay is the advantages. The second thing that will be developed in the topic of malls is the disadvantages. And finally, I will be discussing my own opinion, which is that malls are both good and bad for people. So I need to have these signpost words, first, second, third, in conclusion. If you don't put them in, your mark goes down. Next, I need to join my main ideas together and join my details together. And so here are my linking words. These are also, as well, oops, that's not an A. Furthermore. Moreover. Yeah. Yes. In addition, besides. Yeah. Exactly. In addition, on the other hand, all of these things that join together the points this way. So if I don't use them, 
I'm stuck at band five for my cohesion and coherence. When I use a range of them, now my score goes up. And this is the other thing about essays that have only one main idea for the paragraph. If I have only one main idea, how can I use a range of these things? I need yes. ideas to connect together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry to uh, interrupt, but uh, I think if, uh, if we can use uh, uh, firstly or secondly and lastly, uh, will that work or not? Yes, those are also linking words. Right. But I think that's are uh, quite common, and that would be uh, not as much effective as the the listed one. It's this is not a competition to be the most original or the competition to be <laughs> the most unique. It's about okay. can you do it right and can you show a wide range? It's All right. What you do is this way across first, second, third, and then down first lee, second lee, third lee, like yes. this. Or you do it here one time, firstly, secondly, here you go, firstly, as well, or furthermore, and you mix it up so that you get a wide range of these. The key is to use many of them. So again, if you have only a few ideas, how can you use many connective words? Yeah. Okay, Chris, so I've, I've got one maybe a naive question, yeah? Sure. So, yeah, uh, 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 so to to score a high band in the in the writing section, do I have to train a lot, to practice a lot, or or to just study the the structure uh, that I have to include in the in in my answer? You have to do both, my friend. This yeah. is the structure. These are think of it like your body. The this structure, topic, sentence, main idea, detail, example, main idea two, detail, example. The same thing in paragraph two, the same thing in paragraph three. These are like the bones in your body. If you don't have enough bones, and if your bones aren't the right size and in the right place, then you can't live. You need your bones to breathe. You need your bones to have the muscles attached to them so you can move. It's just like your essay. If you don't have the bones, your essay doesn't have a life. The meat or the muscles are the ideas that you put onto the bones. And just like people, man or woman, or white or black or brown or whoever, wherever you come from in the world, bones are bones. The structure of the body is always the same. The meat that goes onto the body may be different, but we've all got the same bones, just like an essay or like a bookshelf. It doesn't matter what type of books. A bookshelf is a bookshelf is a bookshelf. The structure of the bookshelf is like the structure of the essay. And once you understand this, then you practice topics and putting different topics and different ideas into the structure. And when you can write an essay like this in 40 minutes in practice, then you know that you are ready to take the test. If you can't do these steps in 40 minutes, don't pay your money, don't go take the test because you're not ready to get your score yet. Continue to train yourself. You don't need to study anything, you need to practice. And so, let's go on. We're finished with our task response and coherence scores now. We've got our ideas in the proper structure and we've connected them together the signposts and the linking. And the linking. Now we're ready to move on to grammar. So I'm running out of room here and I'm going to have to start erasing things. Uh, can you please erase uh, just uh, paragraph one? Yeah. First part. So again, if you came after the beginning, we've got more and more people here. If you're watching on your phone, turn your phone this way and you'll be able to see everything on the board. If you're watching on a computer or a tablet, shrink the screen and widen it like a movie, and you'll be able to see everything clearly as well. So I'm going to take this first paragraph off the board. Hi, Chris, I have one question. Sure. Are you with me? Yeah. 
So how I can identify what is the what, what is the type of question, whether it is advantage, disadvantage, whether it is uh, opinion based, mm -hmm. other one. How I can identify it? This is it. There are only two types of essays. One essay that doesn't ask for your opinion, and then the, all the essays that do ask for your opinion. They, they okay. use different grammar and different words, but it all is your opinion. If you agree or disagree, or what is your opinion, or how much do you disagree or agree, if the positives outweigh the negatives, all of these are asking only one thing. They're asking you to make a judgment, to decide if one is better than the other. There are only two types of essays. If it asks you for your opinion, or if it doesn't. And that's it. And so, if it doesn't ask you for your opinion, then you have an essay with two sides. If it does ask you for your opinion, then you have both sides and your opinion. For all of these things, agree, disagree, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, how much do you agree, what's your opinion, it's all the same question, just using different ways to try to fool you. There's only two types of But why they they fool us? Why do they fool you? Because, <laughs> they, I'll tell you the truth, they ask it in these different ways because, as you know, as soon as people finish the exam, they run to Facebook and they write, they tell what the, what the question is on the exam. And schools pay their teachers to write answers and sell the answers to the students. And so if they had only one question type, everybody in the world would write the same essay every single time. And so they and what is, things up. And what, is meant, and what is meant by the thesis statement, if you can describe this thesis statement? The thesis statement is your answer to the question. And so do you agree or disagree? This is your thesis statement. I agree. I somewhat agree. I disagree. That's your thesis. And it has to be in the introduction. Again, if you missed the beginning of the lecture today, um, <clears throat> I just lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, right. There's the four types of essay, the JPEG picture on the internet that says there's an opinion essay and an uh, argumentative essay and a blah, blah, blah essay. All of this is bad advice. Some of these are telling you that you don't put your opinion in the introduction paragraph, you save your opinion for the conclusion paragraph. And this is completely wrong. <laughs> completely, completely wrong. This is why people get band six and no higher. If you don't put your opinion in the introduction paragraph, you get band four for task response automatically. It doesn't matter how good everything else is, you're left with band four. The purpose of an essay is to develop the main point. The main point is your opinion, if it's asking you for your opinion. And then the rest of the essay is to explain your opinion. You're not writing a mystery novel here. It's not supposed to be a surprise at the end what your opinion is. You clearly say your opinion at the beginning, and then through the essay you explain why this is your opinion. Okay, so you want us to add the opinion in the introduction? Always. Every single time. That's your thesis. It must be there. Thanks for the question. Uh, yeah. Yes. Chris. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. Chris. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I must say that uh, if we introduce our opinion in uh, introductory paragraph, then how uh, that would be defended uh, if we go on either ways? Say again. I mean, uh, I mean, if we go against the uh, opinion of the, the others, which we uh, describe in later paragraphs, and uh, or uh, we will uh, go with uh, for the uh, opinions of the other peoples, then we have to describe in the introductory paragraph as well. I uh, yeah, please. I'm not really sure that I understand your question correctly. Can you try? Uh, I'm just uh, uh, asking that I, if I 
made my opinion in first paragraph uh, would be it would be goes on either way uh, we or we must have to yes sorry if you mean if you change your mind, you say yes. Yes, 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 yes. No like that, like that. <laughs> yeah, that's trouble. That's trouble. Yes. But yes. the solution for this is not to save your opinion until the end. The solution for this is that in your planning that you do here, this is yes. why you don't plan your introduction first. You plan exactly. body paragraphs first. Yes, yes. And then after you judge both sides, after you see the relationship, then yes. you form your opinion. That's and what I that's what I was thinking. Because uh, if I organize my introductory paragraph uh, at earliest, then maybe after the evaluation of disadvantages and advantages of the other people's, then maybe my uh, views would be changed. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right. And this leads to a band five for your task response score because your answer is unclear. Yes, so exactly. You Thank always you. plan the body paragraphs first. Yes. And after yes. you've planned your body paragraphs, then you plan the introduction and the conclusion. And this way yes, you avoid this problem that you've talked about. I would. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great Excuse me, sir? Yeah. I just want to ask one small question that uh, with this pattern we end up with four paragraphs or do we further break down the body paragraphs into two? This is going to be a five paragraph essay. It's going to have an introduction paragraph. It's going to have the advantages of malls, the disadvantages of malls, my opinion and the conclusion. Five paragraph essay. In conclusion are not the same thing? If here's another reason why people get a band five for their task response and cohesion and coherence score, because they combine their opinion paragraph and conclusion paragraph. You can't do this. Conclusion, the purpose of a conclusion is for summary and closing. Any points must be developed in the body of your essay. I cannot introduce new ideas in my conclusion paragraph. This is another reason, again, those four essay types in the picture on the internet, people who follow this get band six, band six, band six. It's because they got eight for grammar or seven for grammar, seven or eight for vocabulary, but they get a band five for their cohesion and coherence because their paragraphing is messed up because they've introduced arguments in the conclusion. They've introduced their um, topic or their opinion in the conclusion paragraph and it's now illogical. I have to put my opinion in a body paragraph and then I summarize the whole essay in my conclusion. I can't introduce my opinion in the conclusion. It must be introduced in the body or it must be introduced in the introduction paragraph it must be developed in the body and defended in the body, and then it must be summarized in the conclusion. But the summary can never include new arguments. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. I, can, may I may I ask one one more question? Or yeah, go ahead. Yes. So for uh, for the paragraph one, you mentioned that two points or two ideas. One about the convenience and the other about the price. Yeah. And then, and then you repeated these ideas in the, uh, in, in, the, in the paragraph three, in your opinion paragraph. So isn't considered a repetition of the, of the vocab or ideas? No. This is considered perfect logical structure because I'm using, here's what some people say. And now I'm responding to what some people say and agreeing or disagreeing with it based on my own real life experience. And so this is not, this is not repetition. Repetition means in the same paragraph, repeating the same idea again and again in different ways. I like malls because they're cheap. And the second reason or and cheapness is why I like malls. And then there's the low cost is also why I appreciate malls. 
and I'm fond of malls because I don't have to spend much money. That is the meaning of repetition, where you have the same idea over and over again. Here we have a point, but the point is made about in general, and now over here I'm agreeing or disagreeing with the point. So this is not the same thing. Okay, so, but I have to include my opinion, but only if I ask about this. If the question asks for my opinion, but if, if it doesn't ask, I shouldn't add my opinion in the introduction or at any paragraph, yeah? Right, right. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. So, here we're getting into grammar. These are the words that give you your grammar score. Which, while, when, where, who, who's, whom, that, since, during, before, after, because, and the, many other subordinating conjunctions and my coordinating conjunctions for and nor but or yet so easy way to remember f a n b o y s fanboys these are the words that give you long sentences if i write or if i speak on the speaking test i am chris i am canadian i teach english I made no mistakes in my grammar, but my score is maximum band five because my sentences are too simple. If you want to rise up to band six, band seven, band eight for your grammar, you have to use these words. I am Chris who lives in Edmonton and teaches English. Now my score can pass band six when I can do this regularly and not make mistakes, now I'm moving up through band seven into band eight. But this is the key to a good grammar score. Every sentence that you speak, every sentence that you write, you should be focusing on having at least three clauses or a phrase and two clauses like this in each sentence. This is the minimum length of your sentences to reach band six. Um, Band six, and se band six is I use some of these and I use them poorly. Nearly every sentence that I make has a mistake in it. Band seven means I'm starting to use combinations of them. I'm adding an extra clause and 30, 35% of the time I'm making a mistake. Band eight means I'm up to 80% correct sentences that use a wide range of these together. And so I am Chris, who teaches English and lives in Edmonton where it's cold in the winter time, but it's beautiful in the summer because the days are 16 or 17 hours long. So Canadians all like to spend their time outside in the summer playing because they know that in the winter, when it gets cold and dark, that they're going to be stuck in the house for several months and it's going to be a long time until they can see the sun again. So this is the way that you develop that grammar score. That's the foundation of it right there. And then I can introduce my complex tenses, like a conditional plus perfect plus past, present, future, plus continuous, or ing. And so, something like this. If I hadn't stayed up so late last night, I wouldn't feel so tired today, and I would be able to be paying more attention in class. So, I can't really do this until I do this first, or else I've again just got short sentence, short sentence, short sentence. And so what I do is I've got all of my ideas here. They're all in logical order. I look at this and I figure out how to join all of these ideas together into one really long sentence using these words. And then I add in my tenses to give my ex explanations of things. And so this is my grammar score. We've talked now about task response, cohesion and coherence, and grammar. 
The final thing we need to talk about is vocabulary now, or lexical resource, which is more than vocabulary. And so I'm going to erase some more. Can I erase body paragraph two? Yes, go ahead. All right. So lexical resource score. First of all, uh, sorry, Chris, to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, before moving ahead, would, would like to answer my question that can we add two to three advantages in one, par one paragraph? Yeah, but your paragraphs need to have balance. If I have two or three advantages in one paragraph, but only one disadvantage in the other paragraph, now I'm out of balance. And your IELTS band descriptors for band six say you talk about all of the ideas, but some are more developed than others. And so if you've got what the advantages are very well developed, but your disadvantages only have one point, that's what band six describes. So it should be equal, equal. Like if, if I wrote three advantage, there should be three disadvantage. Yeah, in the perfect essay, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, first of all, I want to related to lexical resource and vocabulary. I want to say that synonyms are not good for you. Synonyms are bad for you. Band eight for your vocabulary means that your writing is crystal clear. You use the perfect words in the perfect situations. And so what many people do is they write an excellent essay where they've developed everything exactly like we did here. And they've got band eight for their task response and cohesion and coherence and their grammar is wonderful. And then at the end of their essay, they go back and they look at the vocabulary words and they start switching words and putting in synonyms instead of the regular, ordinary, boring word that was there before. Because they think this is going to raise their vocabulary score. But it has the opposite effect. When you start to use synonyms instead of the real right word, this is making your writing less clear. Synonyms are situation specific. That is, it only works in the right place, talking about the right thing. And so when I change one word with a synonym, my writing becomes 1% less clear. If I do this two times, now I'm two or 3% less clear than perfect. And that's enough to move my score down from eight to seven. When I've done this three, four, five times in my essay, this moves my vocabulary score down to band six. Band six for your lexical resource says uses less common items, but with many mistakes or but with inaccuracies. And all you get is four. In a 300 word essay, you get four or five of these and you're stuck at band six again. So don't use synonyms. You need to use the right word in the right situation. And that right word is the simple word. The way that you get the high vocabulary score is by having a good plan. When you've got a plan that has enough ideas and details and examples, you naturally have to use a wide range of vocabulary. We've talked about the most general ideas down to the details into the real life examples of things. And so we've talked about all of the different types, all of the different layers, and this is how you get a high vocabulary score. It's not from switching things with synonyms. Don't do that. The idiom in English for this is to shoot yourself in the foot. You wrote a brilliant essay, and you ruined it at the end by using synonyms. So don't do this. Yeah, but Chris, yeah. may, I, may I interrupt you here? Please. Uh, uh, so, but I'm not confused. You, you're, you're saying no synonyms, but we are talking about one certain topic, which is uh, the shopping and the malls and and, and, and buying, etc., etc. So, how how could I like avoid 
uh, using many synonyms like for, for example convenient and ex expensive and cozy and I have to use synonyms yeah so what you're saying is not really what I'm talking about you are we have a wide range of ideas and you are talking about using the correct word in the correct situation this is what you're supposed to do by having many ideas to talk about you get to use a range of vocabulary words so what I'm saying is that don't try to change the word that you had before and use a less common word or a more unusual word because that word is going to reduce the clarity of your writing. Your writing is going to become less clear and this is going to lower your score. What a great plan like we developed on the board here you're naturally going to have a high vocabulary score. You don't need to worry about changing words to less common words. You've got the perfect word in the perfect situation, and you've got many, many different situations, and so you've got a wide range of vocabulary, and it's used correctly. And that's what you need to do. Please do not back engineer. Please do not back engineer your vocabulary. Start at the end and change things and go backwards. This is how you ruin your lexical resource score. Hey, Chris. Hey. I'm Ryan here. Uh, we are having a very good learning experience. Uh, just one question. Uh, as you said, use the right word and the right situations. So how can we develop? We have a huge round of vocabulary. How can we develop um, this habit? You practice writing essays. Um, <clears throat> actually, uh, uh, I was just thinking that uh, rather than practicing uh, essays, like if we, well, yeah, we can practice essays, but reading newspapers, uh, newspapers have wide range of uh, words. They are simple words and uh, in wide situations. So automatically we, we, we can develop the vocabulary as well as idea. How do you see? Waste of time. <laughs> and what you do is you get Cambridge Isles books and you practice writing the essays in them. And then okay. if you come across, if you have an idea and you don't know the English word for it, then you look up that word and you learn that word and you go on and write more and more and more. And the next time that you come to an idea that you don't know the word for, then you look it up and you learn that word. In oh, okay. this way, you learn the words that you need to learn. You're not memorizing a thousand words that you will never use oh, in your life okay. and you will never use on the IELTS test. Okay, okay. Do not memorize uh, word lists. It's a giant okay. waste of time and it doesn't improve your English. This is about skills. If you want to develop your writing skills, you have to write. If you want to develop your speaking skills, you have to speak. If you are memorizing words, what are you developing? You're developing your memory. Your memory is getting stronger and stronger when you memorize more and more words. Your English isn't getting better and better. It's Thanks. better to have a few words that you use very well than to have many, many words that you use poorly. And that's the... That's the I have a question. Yes. Um, I want to, to ask about the essay where they ask, um, uh, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. So for example, if the, the point, I mean the issue has uh, both advantages and disadvantages, how I prove that the advantages outweigh the, the disadvantages? What is the way that I show the, the examiner that for me the, the advantages are more important? You just like we did here today, you probably came in late because you're coming for speaking class and our writing class has gone far over time. But what we did here, this is the question was, do the advantages of shopping malls outweigh the disadvantages? That was the question that we developed today. Mm -hmm. And so body paragraph one, 
was the advantages of supermarkets and shopping malls. And we had two advantages. And then we had body paragraph two, the disadvantages of shopping malls. And we had two disadvantages. And then we came to the opinion paragraph over here. And my opinion is that it's a mixed bag. The advantages don't really outweigh the disadvantages. It's, they're both good and bad. And so what we did was we used the points from the advantage side and we agreed with them. And then for the justification, I use my own real life experience to say why I think it's true or why it's not true. So you don't think that advantages outweigh the disadvantages. This was by your opinion. Yes, this was my opinion in this case. If I did want to choose that the advantages don't outweigh the disadvantages, then I look at this side, the advantages side, and in my opinion paragraph here, I talk about why I don't agree with what these people say. And in the disadvantage side, for my main idea number two, I say why I do agree with the people who say the disadvantages are bigger. And so it always comes down to my own real life experience. Right in the question, again, at the bottom of every question, give reasons for your answers and include any relevant examples from your own experience. And that's and, how you justify your answer. Okay, I'm sorry that I came late, but again, in the, the third paragraph where you, you, you say your opinion, how do you out how how do you say that if you if it it has both advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. so why you are more uh, why you don't agree what is the reason well, you can give example i will be yeah so i said yeah. malls are a mixed bag that is i don't fully agree or disagree that they're all good or all bad and so the first reason is because with the, uh, the people that agree that malls are good, I agree with their reasons. Um, for example, they said that the convenience of malls is better and the price of malls is at malls is lower. And I agree with this because I now shop at my local mall. And before I had to go shopping three times a week in different places in the city. And I used to spend $400 per week. But now mm -hmm. I shop at one time a week at one place and I only spend $300 per week. Secondly, these other people said that malls are bad. They said that they're bad firstly because they destroy the downtown of a city where any The shop small shops, the small stores. Right. And I agree with this because in my hometown, I saw the same thing. There used to be shops and restaurants and everything downtown, and now it's a ghost town. Mm -hmm. And so I also agree with this side of the argument too. So mm -hmm. overall, these are the reasons why I think that this is not a black or white issue. So in your opinion, you can repeat the, if you, for example, believe more in the advantages, in your opinion, you have to to go back to the advantages that you, are, you already mentioned. Yes. You don't bring here new advantages. The difference is that here in my opinion, I justify my opinion or I prove my opinion with my own real life experience. And that's example. different than the two sides of the argument over here. Oh, but in the two sides of the argument, uh, the, the first and second paragraph, you can give uh, examples, right? Sure. But think of it this way. But general examples. These people, these people say this. Those people say that. And I, I say that. Yes. Perfect. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have, we're talking about vocabulary now. And I've just said that synonyms equal bad. The way to get great vocabulary score is to have a lot of things to talk about and to use the right word in the right situation. Also, idiomatic language. Just like in speaking test, I have idioms, 
I have similes, similes, and I have metaphors. And so idioms, we all know what idioms are. My advice for idioms is don't memorize a hundred because you're never going to get to use them on the test or in your real life. You memorize three or four and you practice them in all of your speaking and all of your writing to try to introduce the opportunity to use it. Also, your own three or four English idioms. Use your own idioms. Use your own cultural idioms. In my country, we have a saying, what, 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 what. It's just as good as using an English idiom. If it fits the situation, if it's logical, it's wonderful. When you use these types of devices, this helps to push your lexical resource score above band seven. Similes is this grammar pattern. Um, he works like, oops, a machine. So I use this like. Something is like something else. This is a, sim a simile. Or he is as strong as a bull, as fast as the wind, as hard as a diamond, as big as a mountain, as something as something else. This grammar pattern helps your vocabulary score get to band seven and above. Metaphor is a different one. Again, he is a machine. Someone who works and works and never gets tired, he is a machine. He works like a machine. There is the difference between a simile and a metaphor. Use these in your speaking and your writing. And this is how you get a great grammar score or a great vocabulary score. It's all about having a big plan. If you're going to get a good task, if you plan a good task response, you get automatically a good vocabulary score, as long as you spell your words properly. <clears throat> and so, we've talked about task response, we've talked about cohesion and coherence, we've talked about grammar, and we've talked about your lexical resource or your vocabulary. And so, we're done our planning. The next step is to write this essay out into paragraphs. And so, if you want to do this and send it to me, I will correct it for you. You send it to me once, I mark it. Every problem, every mistake that you make, I circle it and give you the correction. I give you a band score broken down into the four parts of the band descriptors, and I give you suggestions how to raise each part and then I send it back to you. And you rewrite the essay according to my suggestions, and you send it back to me, and I mark it and score it and give you advice again. This costs 15 Canadian dollars, one five dollars. So to join this class regularly, this is what we're going to be doing every Wednesday, is I'm going to take another task out of the IELTS, I have one question. Can I ask and I'm going to develop it on the board. To join the class costs $10 Canadian. Then if you want me to mark your essay for you, the double marking that I just described, that costs $15 Canadian. And so that's about writing class. Every Wednesday, there's an earlier class for Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Vietnam time, which is that... 8, 7 p.m. in Pakistan, 8 p.m. in Bangladesh, 7.30 p.m. in India. There is this class now, which is 8 p.m. Egypt time, 9 p.m. Saudi time. Well, it's, 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 it's 9 p.m. also Egypt. Yeah. 
Well, we're late here. The class is only supposed to be one hour long. I'm actually a half an hour into the speaking class that's supposed to be happening right now. I want to ask one question on the writing paragraph orientation. Can I ask now? Yeah. Okay, so my question is... Well, hold on. I'm going to mute some microphones and then please ask, unmute your microphone and ask again. So unmute your microphone and ask the question again, please. I was saying that as you have suggested to add uh, a body paragraph which will state our opinion. Uh, so is it mandatory to add this kind of paragraph in every kind of essay, like in agree or disagree essay? Yes, if it's asking for your opinion, you have to put an opinion paragraph. If it okay. doesn't ask for your opinion, if it just says, then you don't have an opinion. Sorry, it's loud again. Hold on. Okay, please turn your microphone on again, buddy, and ask your question again. Okay, I'm asking that each time when we have asked to write our opinion, then the structure of the essay will be five body paragraph, right? Yes, yes. That's the simplest formula. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So I forgot actually to mention the introduction and conclusion paragraph in all of this. Hi, Chris. Yeah. What about using the fancy words? Like the words that we memorize and use. Don't. This is what I'm talking about with synonyms. You okay. don't need to use synonyms. You need to have a big plan that's complete and then you use the right word in the right situation. Don't go and change the right word into an unusual word. This is not a competition about how many words that you know. Band eight for vocabulary means that you use the perfect word in the situation every time, not the most unusual word. So, introduction and conclusion paragraph. They are the same, a mirror image of each other. They are reflections. Number one, background information. Background information. So, background information is what you paraphrase out of the question, page 100. This is the part where it says, in recent years, many small shops have closed because customers travel to large shopping centers. This is background information. So, I rephrase that or I use my own idea. It doesn't matter, but I'm, this is the introduction of the topic. I can say... Today, downtowns are deserts because shopping malls open in the suburbs. That's good enough for my background information. Then I have my thesis. And the thesis, if, you ask, if it asks your opinion, your opinion must go here. And a preview. or summary, if it's the conclusion. And here I list the body paragraph topics. Oops, that's a B, not a D. I need another pen, hold on. List the body paragraph. Uh, the third bullet is only for the conclusion. Nope. Preview means introduction. Summary means conclusion. Your introduction and conclusion are the same. And so, introduction, I say, today, with the development of shopping malls and super centers, down, uh, small shops are closing all over the world. In this essay, I'm going to tell you that I think that this is a mixed blessing. First, we'll develop, we'll talk about the side of the argument that says there are advantages to this phenomenon. Secondly, we're going to talk about the side that says this is a bad thing. And finally, I'm going to tell you the reasons why I think that it is both good and bad, or why I 
don't fully agree with either side of the argument. And then in my conclusion, I just change the grammar to the past tense. In the introduction, I use the future tense. This essay will be discussing. In my conclusion, I use its past tense. In conclusion, malls are displacing small shops all around the world. In this essay, I told you that I think that this is neither fully a good thing or a bad thing. First, we talked about the advantages, then we talked about the disadvantages, and finally, I told you the reasons why I think it is a mixed blessing. And there's the end of your essay. Introduction and conclusion are mirror images. They're the same thing. Just use future tense in the introduction and past tense in the conclusion. So, uh, so, so four paragraphs, please. Yeah. The one is introduction, second is the advantage, disadvantages, and the last one is the conclusion. These are the three points that must be included in your introduction and in your conclusion paragraph. Is that answer? Do we, need, do we need to add the detail every time that what we are going to add in this essay, like you have written in the third point? Yeah. You can arrange your grammar so that these two are in the same sentence. But you have think, don't think of them as sentences, think of them as ideas. And so if you've got nice, complex grammar, you can put these two into the same nice, long sentence and get a good grammar score for it too. But think of them as ideas. For all of this, don't count sentences. This is another thing people always ask. How many sentences should I have in a paragraph? There's no right answer. The right answer is, is that if you've got a high level of grammar and you use lots of conjunctions, you will have less sentences in your essay because you have more ideas in each sentence. And this allows you to save words and save space, which means that now you can add more points and ideas. And so as your grammar gets better, your word count gets smaller, and it gives you the ability to add more ideas, which expands your task response score. And then you work on your grammar again, and it gets smaller, and you add more ideas, and this all goes in a cycle as your writing develops. And so you get more sophisticated and you get up to that band eight, band nine score. But yeah, but be, be, before I start writing uh, the first paragraph and the second paragraph, I have to make room for the introduction first, like uh, for 40 words or like, like, like 30 words. Again, don't count the word count. There's no maximum word count. There's only a time limit. Um, yeah, but I'm, but, I'm, but, I'm, but I'm talking about the room, the, 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 the space. Yeah. On the paper. Yeah. Be, be, oh, you because... ask for more paper. No, no, no. I I have to start with the introduction. Yeah. Is it... yeah you do your planning first, and then you, when you're doing your planning, you plan the body paragraphs first, plan your introduction and conclusion last. But then step two is the writing step, and when you write your essay. Then you write the introduction first and body paragraph one second, body paragraph three third. But it's two different steps. Planning number one, writing number two. In the planning, you plan your introduction and conclusion last, but in writing, you write the introduction first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Chris, I have uh, one question. Maybe you have told this before, but uh, I'm unclear about it. Sure. The question is like, as you told that in introduction and conclusion, the third point preview and summary. In this, you have written that list body paragraph and topic. Can you repeat this? What do you mean by this? Say that again. As you told in, in as you told before, like about the introduction and the conclusion paragraph. Okay. Uh -huh. So in this, you have discussed the preview and summary. Right. So. Preview, these are the same ideas, same words. 
In the introduction, this is called the preview. In the conclusion paragraph, it's called the summary. The meaning is, it's a list of the body paragraph topics. So first, this essay will discuss the advantages of malls. Second, it will discuss the disadvantages of malls. Thirdly, it will tell you why I think that malls are both good and bad. So these three things should be discussed in this talk. In number three yes it has to be mentioned you have to you have to have some sentence that lists the topic of each body paragraph okay thanks uh, mr. Chris? You're welcome. hello mr. Chris um, firstly I'd like to thank you for the great lecture but unfortunately I have to leave because I have a baby but please mr. Chris I want to to uh, read um, an essay is uh, that mentioned uh, the, the body structure that you mentioned because all books I studied I saw only one idea but, uh, and I I want to be trained well before my exam so mm -hmm. please guide me where is this essay to study it and see the coherence and uh, um, grammar and um, and so yeah where? if you look for my posts on IELTS support group Egypt IELTS support group I've got several example essays on there and I also have my own uh, Facebook group called. Yes, uh, I am a member there. Oh, you're a member. I am a member there. You have a file there. Yes, you have a file. Yeah, if you look through them, I've got okay. essays there as well, and I write them when I get the chance. But I'm usually too busy to sit down and write essays. I'm always marking. Now, after this class, I have to turn off the camera and mark essays again for hours. But um, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Mr. Kidd. You're welcome. If you want to join lessons and come to this class regularly, it's ten Canadian dollars per hour. You can mix this in with speaking okay. class and reading class and listening class. You buy ten hours of lessons and you spend your time in whatever classes that you want. So if you want to do some, thank you so much. Go ahead. Yeah. So. For everybody, if you would like to join my lessons regularly, say hello to me on Facebook Messenger or tag me in a post somewhere, and we will get you enrolled in my regular lessons. And you can we can do this every day of the week for speaking. Reading class is twice a day on Mondays. Writing obviously is on Wednesdays, and listening class is Thursday tomorrow. And so if you want to come back for listening class and speaking class tomorrow, you're welcome to come. So what is the Zoom ID for tomorrow class? It's always the same. This is my personal Zoom ID number. 918-112-8955. The number is always the same for all of my classes. And the time? The time, if you are in India. Saudi in Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia, then the classes are 9 p.m. I think it's, it's uh, Tell me your time. I will convert myself. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11. 11 p.m. Saudi Arabia for reading and writing and listening class. And then midnight, I guess, for speaking. And for India? For India, that time is the earlier time. That 7.30 p.m. every day is speaking class. And then Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at 8.30 p.m. is either reading on Mondays, writing on Wednesdays, and listening on Thursday. So two times every day. There's a East Asia time and a Central time for Africa, Middle East, and Europe. East Asia time for your evenings for Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, people over there. So Chris, I would like to... Chris, I would like to... Yeah, okay, Abdul, you can actually go on, sorry. <laughs> okay. Chris, I would like to summarize your today classes right, right as what, what I have um, learned from this class is that it's better to develop ideas and it will give you more band rather to use uh, the fancy words and like this ideas will sc help you to score more and the simple
Yeah, the ideas and the structure of the paragraph are the bones in your body. You can't and the muscles on the bones if you don't have the bones. The meat on your body are the ideas and the topics. The bones are the structure and the development. So you got it exactly right. And, and does handwriting matters? Say again. Does handwriting matters? It will help you in. This is the thing about your writing. Yes. As long as the examiner can see the letters in your words clearly so they can check your spelling, that's all that counts. If your writing is too messy, like a lot of my writing is, and the letters aren't clear, then this affects your lexical resource or your vocabulary score because the examiner can't tell if your spelling is good or not. Thanks. Mr. Chris, I would like to thank you, thank you for your... Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, Chris, like, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, so Chris, like, my question is, so the first question is, uh, um, I'm sorry, is this, so is this video being recorded? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so basically, like, after the session, if you, so if you want a recording of this video, like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, like, can we have access to that? Yeah, I might post. I might post it for you for free. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, Chris. So, the, okay, Chris. So, the other question is. Uh, so, yeah, yes. So, I'm sorry. Like, suppose I want to get my writing evaluated. Uh, so, in that case, like you were saying, like fifteen Canadian dollars. So, so, is that fifteen Canadian dollars per essay or per two essays, or or um, so I'm sorry, like or or I'm sorry, like or so or like what's it like? Yeah, per task. Okay. And okay. so if you send me this essay, it costs $15, but I mark it, you get to do revision, and I mark okay. it again. And so it's a double marking for $15. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. So basically my other question is, like, do you have kind of a package or something, say, for example, say marking of 10 essays, and you kind of, like, take that's around $15 for that? Yeah, that's what I just told you, actually. For 10 essays, it costs $15 per essay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 10. Okay. Ten right eight, okay. For one essay is $25. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, come again? If you want only a single essay, it costs $25. If you want 10 essays, it costs 15 Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. And, uh, hey, and Chris, so you were saying that after this, okay, now, so since this session is free, after the after this, so whatever sessions you have, like be it listening or reading or whatever. So, uh, so, so I'm sorry, are those lessons going to cost like $10 a lesson? Yes, you can come to one lesson for free from each reading, writing, listening, speaking. Okay, and after okay. this, if you'd like to join, lessons are $10 an hour. You buy a 10-hour package and you go to whatever time and whatever lesson that you like. And okay. I keep your attendance in the lesson. Hey, Chris, uh, I would like to thank you for the session. It was a very wonderful session. And uh, I'm looking for immigra immigrating to Canada. So if sometime I come, I will like to meet you sometime in person. Wonderful. Have, Welcome to Edmonton. Welcome to Edmonton. Make sure you come in the summertime, though. Don't come in the winter. It'll be very shocking. <laughs> no, I have faced the winter time. I, ha I have seen the winter time in other countries. So I know how it is. Yeah. So it won't be shocking. And uh, really, it's uh, really interesting. Uh, to attend your session. So I have just sent you a post. I would like to attend the introductory sessions for other modules as well, like listening, speaking and all. And uh, for this uh, writing, I will see how uh, I will adjust my time for your yeah, se session. Welcome. Everyone's welcome to come and try one lesson. And if you would like to become a regular student, I am completely happy to help you to reach that golden score. That's and Chris, there's a one question from my side. Yep. My question is that I did not start practicing writing yet. Okay, but my test is on 12th of May. Mm -hmm. So give me some plan. This is the plan. Start writing. You better start <laughs> writing essays. <laughs> Follow okay. the instructions that you got today. Um, I've also got a YouTube channel that's got lots of essays that we just like we did today. I've got lots of other different questions on my YouTube channel. You can 
watch those for free. I think there's like 40 hours of free lessons okay. on my YouTube. Okay, page. and can you share your Facebook and the YouTube channel name in the chat? Yep, just look for me on Facebook, Chris Enders. My school is called Canadian Mosaic. Canadian Mosaic English Language School. My Facebook group is called uh, the Canadian Mosaic Quilting Bee. Teacher, get the site so we can read it. So here's my personal page. Here's my school page. And here is my Facebook group. And so tag me in a post anywhere, even if um, you Mr. Chris, don't. Chris, I would like to thank you. You're welcome. Yes, just I'd like to thank you for your free attention. Uh, just so I have one question, please. Uh, if I write one word by mistake and I would like to scratch to replace, that will decrease my score or not? No. You strike it out and just continue on. It's no penalty for striking things out. It doesn't need to look beautiful. So scratching doesn't have any penalty? No. No problem. I see. No. I see. Mr. Chris, uh, okay, excuse thank me. Thank you. Hi. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, apart from the paragraph of, or the body paragraph for the opinion, is it a must to put an opinion in uh, body one and body two? Well, that's a different style of essay. Either you put your opinion, I'll draw it on the board for you. Really, Chris is very helpful. So here's a map. I've got my topic sentence for agree, or we'll call it side one. And my topic sentence, my main idea, my detail, my example. Main idea two, detail, example. And I've got body paragraph two, the side two, topic sentence. Main idea, detail, example. Main idea, detail, example. And then I've got my opinion paragraph. This is what this is what we just finished doing. Canadian mosaic. Topic sentence. Main idea, detail, example. Detail, example. So this is what we did today. Three body paragraphs. I can do this another way as well, where I, instead of this, I cut this in half and I take this side where I talked about I agree or disagree with side one, and I take this and I move it over here and I write it here. My main idea, detail, example about my opinion, about why I agree or disagree with this side. And then I take this one and I move it over and I add it here as their main idea. Main idea three is my opinion about why I agree or disagree with this side. So it's the exact same ideas. I just, instead of having a complete body paragraph here, I take this main idea chain from here and move it over here. Take this main idea chain here and move it over here. And then I would have a two body paragraph essay. So that's a little more difficult or a little more sophisticated. 
if you see the last essay, the last sample essay that I wrote and I posted in my group and on IELTS support and in IELTS MOOC, I wrote this style, the two body paragraph style. Um, I forget what the topic was, but it was this side says this because that because that and I disagree because this this and this and this side said this and they said this but I agree with them because that that and that. And so uh, that's the style that I did the last time. You can look it up on my Facebook group or I support or whatever. This is really kind of you, Mr. Chris. Thank you very much. I'm at your service.